So in three, two. Good afternoon, this is Kathleen Causey. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done on a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding the motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Gover, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Causey? Yes. Dr. Hager? Present. Ms. Rowe? Present. Mr. Thomas? Three are present. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gover, please call the roll for staff uh, participating in today's meeting. Sorry, Mr. Bazemore? Uh, present, thank you. Mr. Corns. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to um, our meeting. Uh, the legislative session is always very busy and exciting. And so the, we're going to start right away with our first item on the agenda. Uh, which is an information item legislative updates and so i call on our liaison um, mr tony basemore thank you good evening good evening everyone and um madam chair thank you um i wanted to just first of all just thank you um for coming in midstream during the legislative session when we had a leadership change and we hit the ground running it was seamless we didn't miss a beat and and our committee members because we all had to shift a little bit and uh, I'm, I just, you know, I just wanted to say publicly that it, it was we did that seamlessly. We didn't meet a, miss a beat, and um, uh, you know, I'm glad we were able to do that. So, so I just want to thank the whole committee for that. Um, May we've been attending uh, the, the chair and I have been attending Mabe's annual meetings um, on uh, with their legislative update, and uh, um, I wanted to just uh, point out that Mabe is doing an excellent job as they always do. Of, of representing the local boards. And one of the things that they do is uh, they really fight to make sure that local boards maintain local control. Um, that's very important and they do an excellent job in that. Um, and they also uh, keep an eye on bills that are uh, overly uh, prescriptive where they, 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 they mean well, but they um, uh, dictate to the locals what to do. And, and so um, this particular session where there's been hundreds and hundreds of bills, we've had more bills this this year than I've seen in recent years, and uh, it's been it's been really busy. Um, so they've been doing an excellent job and um, Madam Chair has been engaged in the conversations when we meet, uh, making sure that Baltimore County's uh, point of view uh, on a lot of these bills is, is, is heard. So we want to just continue to work with Mabe and uh, in, in, in that relationship. Um, right now in the legislature, we're at crossover. Uh, this past Monday was crossover uh, in the state legislature, which means that all bills that were filed, if they um, uh, want to have a good chance of moving forward and be enacted into law, had to have uh, completed um, their process on the Senate or, or, or House side and then crossed over to the other side. So right now, um, those bills that didn't cross over, more than likely, more than likely, um, uh, will not actually be enacted this year, but the bills that has crossed over have a very good chance of being being enacted. So we're continuing to monitor those bills that crossed over. Again, there was hundreds of bills. Um, April the 11th is the last day of the state legislature. So the next three weeks are going to be fast and furious down there. Things will be moving rather quickly. Um, I'm happy to report that we've been getting uh, updates uh, from the chair and vice chair on hearings, local um, hearings uh, and other hearings where we can weigh in uh, by sending letters or, um, uh, or testifying. I, I, I really um, 
Uh, I think we've been doing a good job with that as well. So we'll continue that process now that we're in crossover and uh, any hearings that come up, we're going to try to make sure um, that um, our legislative committee knows about these hearings and our full board so that if an individual wants to weigh in, they can or the board itself. Um, if they want to weigh in on the bill, they'll be able to do that. So that's my informational items, uh, I think, uh, for the legislative session. Again, we have about three weeks left and it's going to be fast and furious. Thank you for that, Mr. Baysmore, and uh, thank you for your kind remarks at the beginning. Um, it It is um, a very important role in this committee and I appreciate the opportunity um, to assist. And I just want to echo uh, the comments about MABE, um, the Maryland Association of Boards of Education um, staff uh, is just outstanding in their work in advocating for effective leadership so that all students can succeed in the state of Maryland. Um, I did also want to point out in addition to the uh, work in the legislature around bills um, that MABE leadership uh, also meets with the governor and staff uh, in order to discuss um, legislative priorities, but also to speak specifically, they had a meeting um, around funding. Um, and it is the work of the Board of Education of Baltimore County to try and uh, access resources that we need for our students. And one of the ways that we do that is to um, utilize May, partner with them, and so um, their work in that regard is going to be updated. And um, so we are hoping for um, some very positive results in that regard. Um, the next item on the agenda is an update on current bills. And so for that, Mr. Bazemore, we'll call All on right. you. Thank so you, guess Madam. The I'm issue sorry. is which ones have, which bills have crossed over and are still um, potentially impactful. Yes, ma'am. OK, so we'll we'll start with Senate Bill 55. And again, this our board um, sent a letter of support for Senate Bill 55, which did reach the delegation. I called and, you know, just to make sure that they received our letter of support. Uh, they did on the House side and the Senate side. So that's that's good. And this bill is, is basically um, uh, putting in line Baltimore County with all the other jurisdictions that you can the um, uh, the board can uh, retain its own counsel. So we don't anticipate any issues with that, uh, but we'll continue to monitor every, you know, to monitor that bill as well. Um, that um, actually, Senator Sidner will be speaking to the House delegation on this bill this Friday, so um, be able to give give an update on that one. The next bill is Senate Bill 414. Uh, again, this is Senator uh, Charles Sidner's bill uh, that uh, passed on the Senate side, uh, SB 414, but is now on the House side. It did cross over. Um, the hearing is this Friday in, in the Baltimore County House delegation. And essentially this and this this is one I think the, the board, you know, is should pay attention to. This bill is actually saying that they want to increase our, our Baltimore County board from to, to 13 members from 12 total right now to to add one more uh, member to the Board of Education. Um, and give the county executive um, the authority to appoint um, that 13th board member. Another part of the bill states that um, in the election of a chair and vice chair, that a majority vote will um, uh, be suffice instead of currently uh, when you elect the chair and vice chair every year, you have to have seven. Uh, 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 and so what this bill is saying that members that are seated at the time of the election, that there will be, if there's a majority vote, then the chair and vice chair will be elected. So I'm, uh, any comments and, and thoughts on that? Committee members, are there um, comments or questions related to Senate Bill 414? Uh, I move that we oppose this bill. Is there a second? I second Aaron Hager. Thank you, so Dr. I Hager. My motion. Ms. Rowe, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, so we don't need more members of the board. If they wanna create a situation where somebody can appoint, where the county executive can appoint someone, 
they should take one of the already appointed positions and just make that position um, one that can be appointed. Because for one thing, I don't know how we would fit a 13th person around the dais. But aside from that, it just seems to me that the General Assembly comes in and makes these recommendations to do these things. Anytime they don't like the outcomes of what's going on the board, and now we have elections. And I just, every single legislative session, there are new changes to the structure of our board because the General Assembly wants to try to control the outcome of the work of this board by changing the rules and changing how we do things. And there has to come a point in time where we have some stability around what we're doing. So if they wanted to take um, one of the current appointed members and have that person be appointed by the county executive, uh, I would have less opposition to it. But just expanding our board with more appointments only waters down the impact of elections, which defeats the point of having elections in the first place. And, and to speak to my second, um, my rationale is the, is the same as the end of, of what Ms. Rowe just said, is that um, you know, it took a long time to get a hybrid board in place where there are elected board members, and I am concerned about adding appointed members um, given the work that was done to ensure that we have an elected voice at the, at the table. Thank you, Dr. Hager. Did Mr. Thomas join the meeting? I just wanted to make sure he had an opportunity to speak if he was in the meeting. I do not see him one. OK, um, well then I'll provide my comments. I um, also oppose this bill. Um, it has, I have seen um, additional bills, uh, some that have gone through in the past that changed the uh, Board of Education in in midstream um, and I do also believe that there needs to be some stability. Also research around school board governance um, indicates that the most effective boards are the middle size boards and that as the boards become larger they actually become it becomes more difficult more difficult to reach consensus more difficult to um, have um, input so um, for many reasons um, I would I'm also in opposition to this. Um, so are there any other comments? OK, then at this time I would um, process this, please, if we could do a roll call vote. This is in opposition of bill Senate Bill 414. Yes, so a vote yes means that you support opposing it. Ms. Causey? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, and Madam, Madam Chair? Yes. May I, may I say, uh, speak to that, uh, mo that motion just now? Yes. Um, I just wanted to make you aware that there's a hearing this Friday in the Baltimore County House delegation on this bill. And so if the uh, board wanted to weigh in the legislative uh, committee or the full board to to give your, you know, reflect the votes today and, uh, you know, you would have up to five o'clock tomorrow, 5 p.m. tomorrow, which is Thursday, to submit written testimony or to um, sign up to speak. And an individual could speak, member from the legislative committee could speak, you know, Madam Chair, you would have to appoint that person or um, a, a board member, you know, Mr. Julie Hayden would, have, would have to appoint somebody. So I just want to put that time frame in there so that you were aware of that. OK, can thank you. you. And can, I'll you send me the link. can you send us the link to sign up online? Because I know the delegation seems to have a different process. Yes, so yes. that was sent in an email, but we can um, we can do that again. So it's at the top and um, Mr. Baysmore, thank you for that. Yes, I will coordinate with um, uh, Madam Chair, Ms. Hen this afternoon and um, so that we can have that discussion of communications. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and 
what were the other bills that have crossed over? Uh, and I'll run through this um, rather quickly. And if it's one that somebody wants to talk about more in depth, we can uh, we can speak about it. So HB 118, which is a mental health day or, or, or days for 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 student that that bill crossed over um, where it gives excused absences for mental health. Um, HB 136 slash Senate Bill 299 is the seizure action plan, the Brindley Act. Um, that has also crossed over uh, into the into the Senate and uh, House Bill 154, which is the anaphylactic food allergy bill that's moving along um, that has crossed over. And I want to say I want to go back to say that um, MAVE It's important that that this committee knows that MAVE actually is supporting with amendments um, the excused absence bill HB 118. MABE is also supporting with amendments um, the uh, seizure action plan, the Brindley Act, that's HB 136. Um, and um, HB 154, which is the food allergy bill, MABE is supporting that as well with amendments. And in all of those amendments, because it's medication involved and there's training involved, MABE is making sure that um, the, you know that that training uh, stays there and that the correct people are identified to deliver these, you know, if it's medication or whatever it may be, that um, it's, it's, it's not just any staff, but that it's, it's people that, are, you know, can be properly trained and to oversee and administer those needs. So those are the amendments that may have been um, adding on to these to these bills. So were the amendments uh, that may put forward, were those addressed by the committees yet? Were they accepted by the committees? Yes, um, they were accepted and now these bills are all crossed over into the Senate. So if we wanted to weigh in um, when they have the hearings come up on the Senate side, uh, we could we could certainly um, make you aware of that. But so far, and again, Mabe does a really good job of of, of advocating and uh, and their amendments were were incorporated in. Thank you. Board members, are there questions or comments about House Bill 118 regarding mental health absences and House Bill 136 uh, related to food allergies and HB 154? I had a question. Yes, Ms. Rowe. So, um, Mr. Baysmore, what was the um, criteria for amendments that Maeve wanted um, for mental health days? Like, does there have to be a mental health diagnosis or is this just any kid that says, I need a break or whatever? Yeah, they they brought up the fact that, and I think uh, we did, uh, actually, uh, when, we, when we discussed this in the past, we brought up the fact that Children can actually have, this is already in the books to a certain extent, if, 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 if a, a child is going to be excused um, um, from school. What Mabe was saying was that they didn't necessarily want, if you're excused for a mental health day, that you had had to uh, bring in a note and then also be referred to see, you know, a psychologist or somebody like, you know, a professional like that, and that they thought that was overly prescriptive. Um, so they amended that. Um, where that is not, you know, necessary, and that this falls in line with with kind of our, our normal, if a child calls in sick, you know, for whatever reason, that it falls kind of in that same category, uh, um, you know, with the same uh, uh, requirements. So then it's basically if the parent writes a note and said, my child needed a mental health day, that's considered like my child didn't feel well or had a cold or whatever. Exactly, uh, Ms. Rowe. And and the other thing is that after a certain point, um, they were saying that no matter whether it's a physical illness or mental illness, I, I forget how many days it is, but I think all school jurisdictions ha have it. After a certain amount of days, then you do have to have a medical, uh, I a, doctor's, a doctor's note. So they wanted they didn't they wanted to make sure that it wasn't overly prescriptive and that it could you know could could fit in with what we're already doing. But in light of the you know the pandemic and everything that has happened the last couple of years, you know, mental mental health 
and 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 is you know this this bill came sort of was born out of that um by by, by delegate washington so so can you tell me if the bill about having inhalers asthma inhalers included in schools crossed over uh is that the uh HB 136, the um, Caesar Action Plan, the Brindley's Law? No, um, it's one that I had asked you about before. I can't remember the number, but it requires emergency asthma inhalers in schools. Oh, the Broncolator bill. Mm hmm. OK, um, that bill has crossed over, but I believe uh, Mabe opposed that bill. That's HB 384. Yes, HB 384 and Mabe, Mabe opposed it. What was their reasoning for opposing it, given that the um, School Nurses Association supported it? Yeah, there was a lot of debate on who's going to administer that uh, and who has the who can who has the ability to actually diagnose and and and, and say whether what you think is happening medically is actually really happening. And they didn't want, you know, certain staff and to be trained to make this determination that in fact this particular medical issue is actually that. So they they thought it was um, not a road that they wanted to go down. Um, like so if the, this bill, was, the bill did specify that the school nurse has to administer it? And but I think that the, you only have a lot of schools don't even have nurses like we we do. Um, but some of the smallest jurisdictions, they, you know, so they they were concerned that well, who are you going to have other than the nurse to make this call and administer this? Like you just that's a heavy thing to think about. Somebody saying, okay, this is this is what we think is happening, and we're going to administer this medically. And and, you, and do you want? somebody outside of the medical realm to make that call and determination. And so there was a lot of debate around that. And so uh, it's crossed over. So there'll be another, there'll be uh, ample opportunity to speak on the Senate side about it. But um, my thinking no, is that, go ahead, I'm sorry. No one, no one raised any amendments that if a school system does this, it has to be administered by a nurse. I think if this bill ultimately gets through, it'll probably probably will be amended. Um, but at this point, um, we'll have to see what happens on the Senate side. Um, I'll, I'll I'll keep a close eye on this because this was one that that you know it was a lot of con a lot of um, attention was brought to this one. So, so I'd like to make a motion that this committee support this bill with the amendment that administration has to be by a school nurse. Is there a second? I have a procedural question if I'm allowed to ask it before there's a second. Um, yes, you may ask a, a point of inquiry on the process, yes. Um, are we allowed to suggest amendments as a committee or? So I, I, I thought that our our position was to weigh in on the existing bills. I, I, I just was curious as to if there's precedent for adding our our own modifications. I, it's, I, I'm just curious. I don't know. We can. It's kind of like saying we support the bill if you do X, Y, or Z. Um, and so it's not like we're necessarily making the amendment to the bill or anything. It's just basically communicating to the General Assembly that if you made this amendment, then we would support the bill. And so my motion is to support this bill with the amendment that the administration of an emergency inhaler be done by a school nurse. OK, and currently school nurses are allowed to. No, there's no emergency inhalers in schools at all currently. So, so if, the only, child, if a child brings in their own inhaler, then they can use it in schools. But it, this is to provide inhalers for a child who does not have a prescription inhaler in house. Um, or they it? forget, or they forget theirs, or um, the you know child is having 
some kind of respiratory event and if a school nurse thinks that an inhaler will help i agree that a professional needs to administer it but as mm -hmm. many kids as we have is who have asthma and different kind of things in our school system and develop allergies and whatnot it makes no sense to me that we don't have emergency inhalers in every school and the school yeah. nurses the school nurses association had previously objected to this, but they had decided recently to change their mind on that, and now they support it. So, Ms. Rowe and Ms. Um, Dr. Hager, uh, I'm going to interrupt you for a moment. Uh, I do want to welcome our uh, fellow board member, student member of the board, Mr. Christian Thomas, to our meeting. Um, we are discussing House Bill 384, and according to parliamentary procedures, we had Ms. Rowe uh, she made a motion, and since we uh, there was a procedural question that then, in my opinion, proceeded into um, discussing the merits of the motion, um, I am now going to process the motion um, since we have already started discussion on it. Um, so, Mr. Bazemore, what I was looking up was to see the um, House Bill 384 in its current form to see if there were amendments added. Um, and I am not seeing on the link that I have, which is to the Maryland legislature, um, any amendment language. And I did want to point out that uh, Mabe did oppose this and that their testimony included uh, their concern about the risks and unintended consequences associated with this legislation. I'm reading from their publicly available uh, testimony that's on the uh, mabe.org website under their advocacy page. Um, it says the this bill would require each local board to establish a policy to authorize not only the school nurse, but also other designated personnel to administer a bronchodilator to a student. Uh, further, the bill would require that these new policies cover instances when a student is determined to have asthma or is experiencing asthma related symptoms or is perceived to be in respiratory distress, regardless of whether the student has been diagnosed with asthma or has a prescription for a bronchodilator. Um, Mabe also pointed out that um, they, Mabe all, this is a quote, Mabe also wants to assure the legislature that local school systems are already operating in accordance with Maryland law that provides for emergency care planning for all students under the Code of Maryland Regulations 7-401 and 7-426. Um, and it goes on um, about under law MSDE and the Maryland Department of Health uh, must provide technical assistance to schools. So um, I just wanted to add that. And then, um, so now that we are officially processing this motion, Ms. Rowe, do you believe that you have spoken to your motion sufficiently? Excuse me, Ms. Yep. Causey? Yes. There was no second, so there is no motion on the floor right now. Um, thank you, Ms. Gover. We've been um, advised in the past by our um, board, not <clears throat> excuse me, by council, that if there is discussion around a motion that's not seconded, that it then must be processed. So, thank you. We'll we'll finish it out that way. And, and if it's um, appropriate, I would be willing to second the motion, um, or or we could just continue to discuss it, whatever whatever is best. If you'd like to second it for continued discussion, that's fine as well. I would. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hager is the second. Um, so Ms. Rowe, do you feel that you've spoken to your motion sufficiently? Yes, I feel that the fact that the School Nurses Association supports this is fairly compelling. Thank you. And Dr. Hager, did you want to make additional comments? Um, I agree that the support of the School Nurses Association is important. Um, and uh, as a parent who's had experience with this, the the onus is on the parent to send in a prescription inhaler that is not expired with a doctor's note and it, it's um, something that we do annually for one of our children and it's 
you know, if, if we don't catch it in time when seasonal allergies come around, it can be very uh, worrisome. And so if something were in-house, should there be an emergency, I can see why that would be very useful for, for children who do have respiratory issues. So um, I agree though, that the uh, administration should be done by one of our amazing school nurses. That's all. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Thomas, you had your um, hand up. You wanna to speak to this motion? Yes, thank you. So this is this motion that we're discussing right now is on Ms. Roth motion to uh, amend, to support with the amendment that only school nurses can administer the, 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 the topic or the the medicine the medicine thank you the medicine yes is that correct yes and actually mr okay. Rowe, can you put that did you put that in the chat i i will thank you mr yeah, Bismarck, what was the bill number again three eight four mm-hmm house bill three eight four And while she's doing that, Mr. Thomas, I'm not sure uh, what you heard. We're currently uh, discussing the bills that crossed over. So those are still the only ones that are um, possible to become law. And so House Bill 384 may be opposed. Um, and I read a bit of that of their testimony that was presented. And um, just for the public, the MABE.org um, is the website where they have all of their legislative priorities um, very clearly laid out. And then they also provide all testimony that they provide on uh, each bill where they write specific uh, testimonies. Okay, Mr. Thomas, did you have additional questions or comments? No, I just wanted to apologize for, for my delay um, in joining this meeting, and I, I didn't have a chance when I first joined. Um, I, I was running a little late, and then I had some technical difficulties, but I am glad to be here now, and I'm excited to vote on this. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to um, restate the motion. Ms. Rowe made the motion that the committee support House Bill 384 with the amendment that administration of the inhaler be administered by a school nurse. Uh, board members, is there any additional comment or questions related to this motion? Hearing none, can we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Causey? No. Dr. Hager? Yes. Pro? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That motion carries um, and we will uh, coordinate with Mr. Bazemore and uh, the chair of the board, Ms. Hen, to provide communications to um, the appropriate committee. Um, well, wait, be so when we approve a motion in the committee, I believe it goes to the full board to take a board position. Um, we, at the next board meeting, we will bring it forward if it is still, um, if it is, if it is still an issue. Um, but these votes can also be, are also sent because of, uh, the timing. So and how, that, how do we send them then that the board committee supported it with amendments? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I just need a clarification on that. Certainly, and the and what we'll do also is the um, that information is sent to the full board first through Ms. Hen, and then to the uh, appropriate committee or um, senator or delegation, whoever's having the next hearing. And also, when the board um, supports or when the committee. Uh, takes a position or whether the full board takes a position, uh, individual board members uh, have the opportunity to testify if they have additional comments or opinions that they want to present as an individual. 
and and Madam Chair, we'll get the uh, dates uh, of these hearings that's crossed over on the Senate side to to the committee and to the full board, so that if an individual wanted to speak, they could, or if the full board has voted on it, you can get your letters out to to the committees. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and let's see. I think Mr. Bazemore, we were working down a list. Mm-hmm. And I think we had stopped at HB 154, um, the food food allergy uh, bill. So the next the next one is HB 192, which is a student. It's a local bill for the um, Baltimore County student board member voting rights. Uh, this is this has crossed over as well. Board members, are there questions or comments about House Bill 192? Ms. Cossey. Yes, Mr. Thomas. I move to send this bill to the full board uh, with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Is there a second? I second that. Thank you. That's Dr. Hager with the second. Mr. Right. Thomas, you want to speak to your motion? Yes, so this bill um, addresses it would allow the student member of the board to vote on the capital and operating budget, which is done currently in Montgomery County and in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Uh, during this year's operating budget cycle, there were a few amendments that I really wanted to push for, uh, for for our budget. One of them was getting the coordinator of student activities, which Ms. Joes was willing to make on make. Uh, and one of them was about the board ombudsman, which Ms. Causey, you made. And there were a number of other amendments that I was working with staff on. But, you know, in my position as student member of the board, I couldn't actually make those amendments. And and to me, being not being able to make an amendment on the budget is, is something that I, I completely disagree with. You know, it's one thing like I, I think of last meeting when I made an amendment on the policy and I was the only one to vote in favor of it. You know, there are checks and balances in place to ensure that if the student member wants to be able to vote on the budget and make amendments, that if it's not the will of the board, then it's not going to occur. But I still don't think the student member should be limited in that manner. Additionally, I've seen the work that the Anne Arundel County Public Schools SMOB and the Montgomery County Public Schools SMOB have done. The Montgomery County Public Schools SMOB, I think, made a total of four amendments to the budget, over $4 million in, in, in the budget, expanding virtual learning opportunities. They've done so many things for mental health supports that Really, the student member has to face so many other barriers when it comes to the operating budget. And for the capital and operating budget overall, you know, this bill was amended by Delegate Bandari um, in the bottom in, in the House to state that the SMOB was to, would be getting a training on the capital and operating budget. Now, I know this board did not support making this giving the SMOB full voting rights, with the exception of negative personnel matters, um, as a legislative priority. But I do hope that, that this committee and the full board will support allowing the SMOB to vote on the operating and capital budget, as in my opinion, that's the most important function of the Board of Education. So I thank Dr. Hager for the second, and I hope that with this specific information we can move forward and support our student member of the board thank you thank you mr thomas and dr hager you want to um speak to your second um i know i've spoken about this before my my own perspective i've um i've uh, written provided written testimony um as an individual uh citizen of baltimore county um but also as in, in this forum as a board member i do think that it would be beneficial for our board to have the student member have uh, almost full voting rights, so um, so I don't think I have any anything additional to add. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Um, the only thing I would like to point out is that recently it came to um, the attention of a lot of people that during the SMOB election, more people than just middle school and high schoolers were able to vote on the SMOB election on the form, and that basically anyone with a BCPS account was able to vote. And unless we have some assurance, which we have not yet received, that those extra votes were filtered out, I have uh, I have positions on this that I've stated before, but that just reinforces my positions even more. Okay, and Mr. Thomas, I see, did you uh, want to make another comment? 
Okay. Yes, thank you. So to, to Ms. Rose's point, um, that is the case. Anyone with a BCPS account can do that. However, our fam Office of Family and Community Engagement and the Baltimore County Student Councils do an extensive audit of all of the votes, and they took out many, many, many votes this time around with that. And I, I, I haven't heard any information that that was requested by the board to have information about that process, but I'm, I'm quite certain that you can reach out to, to them. Ms. Murray, Ms. Wade, they do an extensive audit of all of the votes to ensure that they align with the BCPS secondary students' email addresses. They have a list of all the secondary student email addresses and ensure that only those votes are counted. And they get rid of all of the teacher ones and they, they even send an email to those teachers saying, thank you for your interest in the SMOB election. However, you cannot vote in this manner. So please continue to encourage your students to, although you cannot. And they do, they review and make sure that it's only sixth through 12th grade students. Um, it's quite an extensive process. So, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to, to those individuals and, our, and Dr. Williams to have that information in, in writing. But trust me, I wanted to make sure that that was, that this was a secure election in terms of who can vote on that Google form. And it is only secondary students. Uh, thank you for that comment, um, Mr. Thomas. And um, I do believe that, uh, of course, the superintendent has been uh, made aware of uh, concerns and, and the situation. So um, thank you for that additional information. Um, so are there any other comments? Um, so I, I'm just going to make a comment. Um, I was an appointed member in 2015 and then I ran for election in 2018 um, and became elected by my council district three. Um, and I appreciate the um, confidence and uh, engagement of so many that made that happen. Um, and in my um, seeking input on this issue, um, I will not be supporting this. While I greatly value the student member of the board um, and all of the ones that I've experienced um, in seven years on the board uh, um, are, are, you know, amazing. Um, they're amazing board members, um, but there's also been some uh, information, different uh, inputs um, that have been heard in Annapolis. And I just feel like it's a very, very uh, large responsibility, especially around the, the budgets um, where it does not seem consistent to have board members vote that uh, in any other circumstance wouldn't under the law for other board members that are elected and appointed who have to be 21, who have to be registered to vote, um, that it, it, there's reasons that that's the case. Um, so I just wanted to be clear um, that the input that I've received uh, from constituents and so forth is that uh, at this time that that's not supported. So I just wanted to be clear with my position and with what my vote's going to be. Um, if there's no other com comments, we'll take a roll call vote, please. Ms. Causey. No. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Rowe. No. Dr. Hager. Yes. Okay, so the motion fails. Um, and again, there when there's opportunities for testimony, um, that that will be made available. Um, Mr. Bazemore, what other um, bills had crossed over? And Madam Chair, on, on HB 192, the student voting, that will go more than likely to the Senate, uh, Baltimore County Senate delegation, and things will move rather fastly because uh, we only have two or three weeks. So as soon as I get um, the dates on these bills that we that we brought up today, I want to get them to you and the and the vice chair as quickly as possible, so that okay. if anybody want to weigh in individually or as a or as a board, we can do that because things are going to move pretty quickly from for the next three weeks. Um, given the given the time is of the essence, I think it's. Um, fully appropriate that Mr. Baysmore, you can email the full board at the same time with that information because okay. it'll it'll save time, save a step. Um, and uh, we you know, we know that you are. Um, keeping your finger on the pulse and keeping track of everything, so I think that would be the best way to move forward, given 
like you said, the the uh, how quickly things can yeah. go through from now till the end of session on April 11th. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Mr. Uh, Thomas, did you have your hand up? Did you have a? Yes, I just wanted to state that uh, the House Bill 192 is actually there's a hearing today in the Senate Education, Health and Environmental Affairs Committee. Um, and I I'm not sure when I'll be going into the Baltimore County Senate delegation, but Mr. Bazemore said he'd update us. OK, thank you. Our next bill is House Bill 226 uh, and Senate Bill 577. And this bill was introduced by uh, Delegate Guyton. It's the self-contained special education classroom use of video recordings. Uh, Mabe has also opposed this bill, HB 226. Board members, are there questions or comments? Mr. Thomas? Thank you. I believe when this bill passed in the House that it passed as a pilot program for the uh, for upcoming school years. Can you elaborate on that? I know that 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 it, it passed in the House, I think, with only two or three in, a po in opposition to it. Yeah, I think I think you're correct, uh, uh, Vice Chair. The uh, pilot program that they amended this to uh, wouldn't require the jurisdictions to adopt this, but to actually in one or two jurisdictions that I think uh, if I remember correctly, um, would have to voluntarily say that they would be the pilot um, jurisdiction that they could opt opt into that. Uh, so this bill has crossed over, so it still remains to be seen how it's going to come out in its final form. Uh, but it's 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 crossed over to the um, uh, to the other side. So we'll keep an eye on this one as well. Okay. Well then, Miss Causey, if I may. Yes. I move to support this bill with the amendments. Do you hear what I said or did I cut out? You cut out. <laughs> I have this bill with the amendment that it serves as a pilot program. Is there a second? Did I see Dr. Hager typing? Uh, Madam Chair, that was me. I just wanted to say I need to recuse myself from this as I have a nephew who's in one of these classrooms. OK, thank you for that, Ms. Rowe. Um, I'll second this motion. Mr. Thomas, uh, do you want to speak to that, please? Sure, so I, I'm unsure as to, there, sorry, there's, I'm in a school right now, so there's some some uh, custodial work going on right now, but I'm unsure as to whether or not I will support it. I support the idea of having special education, cameras in special education classrooms. I wanna see more research and I wanna see how it's implemented in Maryland. So I do support the idea of having a pilot with voluntary engagement just to see what kind of information we can find, to see if it is actually beneficial to our our, our our special education students that have communication um, like that are that are nonverbal. Um, I, I want us to be able to look at that. I want us to see how it's implemented in Maryland because I think that this could be a step into putting cameras in all of our classrooms, which I don't support. Um, and I, and I, I want to. I just I think we do. I, I do want to look at it. I do want to see what it actually does for our system. And I appreciate that this uh, it got an overwhelming support in the house. And so I I, I do want to. I do want to support that in, in that sense. But. I also don't want to send a message to our special education teachers that they aren't doing an incredible job maintaining safe environments in their classrooms because I sat in at Bear Creek Elementary School as an additional adult assistant and I saw the incredible work that's being done and I know it's been done across the county and cows and fowls and, and so many other programs but I do want to see if it actually will become a tool for to, to defend our teachers when they are accused of possibly uh, being abusive in the classroom when that isn't the case and if it will defend our, our students. I, I just don't know. So I think that having a pilot program is is not is nice. Um, I would I don't know if I would have supported it if, if it was immediate requirement, but I do like the pilot program amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas and. Um, Dr. Hager, you have a question. Sorry, my mouse is not cooperating on my computer. Um, yes, uh, 
has this bill been supported by um, any teacher organizations um, or special education teacher organizations that we know of? I'm not aware. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So I'm looking up the on the legislative website and um, this bill with the amendments related to uh, becoming a pilot program. Uh, it passed third reading. The vote was 128 to four. Um, and so next it's going <clears throat> to the Senate Education, Health and Environmental Affairs uh, Committee. And my understanding was that the um, MSEA did not take a position on this. And I'm looking down the witness list to see if that's the case. Mr. Bazemore, if you have background on that that you'd like to contribute. Uh, the the I'm looking at the same list you're looking you're looking at, Madam Chair. And um, I don't see I see the same I see the same thing you're seeing. So uh, Unfavorable was may, may, may uh, uh, oppose this bill. Yes. Um, Mako, Mako, no, it looks like M Montgomery County Board of Education, uh, unfavorable. They didn't support the bill at uh, Montgomery County. Uh, I do know that in listening to the hearing, one of the questions brought up was what are the tapes going to be used for? And I felt like it was coming from uh, a teacher's point of view. Will these any of these tapes be used to evaluate my teaching performance? And so. Thank you. I'm just looking down this list also. Um, and I was able to listen to some of the. Testimony and. I think it's particularly compelling because um, many of the students are nonverbal and that in the absence of an eyewitness, um, this camera would act as an eyewitness on um, and that in many cases it could be beneficial to the teachers or staff uh, that were supervising the student. Um, in terms of what exactly happened. So I greatly appreciate and respect all of our special educators and because I think that this could be helpful in determining what did happen and I certainly and the language does not support it being used as official observation for teachers to evaluate them and I certainly understand that concern. Um, but I think to support it as a pilot that's. That's something that I think is logical. Um, and then we can determine from that pilot um, the success of it, the effectiveness, and if there needs to be additional improvements or additional languages uh, um, in order to protect teachers and uh, to make sure that um, it's effective for everyone. And I think, Madam Chair, that's what you just said and, and Christian brought out kind of guided them to the pilot program. I think that was kind of a grand, you know, compromise and bargain in the whole scheme of things. So there was good, good points brought brought out on both sides of this. And um, so I think that's why they landed on the pilot program as well. OK, thank you. Is there any more um, comments? If not, can we have a roll call vote, please? Sure. Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Did you call me? I did. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Hager. Epstein. Ms. Rowe. Recuse. OK, thank you. Um, so that motion does, uh, that motion fails. OK, and Mr. Bazemore, were there other bills that crossed over that had uh, potential impact to the to our board and our students and employees. Yes, ma'am. Two other bills 
I wanted to highlight is HB 476, which is uh, which crossed crossed over, and that bill is stating that the um, and there was there was a lot of discussion at this at, at the two school board meetings ago about the appointed members of the school board um, being sworn in in January by the incoming governor. And that those four appointed members um, who will be appointed in January of 2023 would serve for two terms. And then in 2024, during the presidential election, those um, those four appointed members would then you know have to be reappointed or new members appointed. This was brought about so that you wouldn't have a situation that we're in now, where a, a lame duck governor, um, Governor Governor Hogan, is not running for a third term in Maryland. You can only serve two terms. Um, is not able to appoint the, the the appointed board members. And so therefore you would have to wait until the new governor is sworn in in January, January the 1st, I believe, and that new governor would then appoint the members. And by staggering the terms of, of these, these appointed members um, to 2024, you essentially um, won't have that situation again where you'll have um, a governor uh, not able to appoint uh, these these board members. Um, so that that's the extent of that bill. Um, it 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 made it through the House side and now it has crossed over to the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Bazemore. Board members, are there questions or comments regarding uh, House Bill 476? Mr. Thomas? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I missed in the chat here. Um, Dr. Dr. Hager, would you like to state what you put in the chat? Yes, um, I, I, I have a motion I'd like to make. I, I'm not sure how to best do it because there are two parts of this bill that um, one of which I think is great and the other I think is not great. Um, so I'd like to move to oppose the portion of the bill which delays the selection of appointed members. Um, I'm not sure if that again is is standard for, for this committee to um, would we need to oppose the entire bill or are we able to oppose oppose a portion of it. So we could we could um, excuse me, we could Ms. Excuse me, Ms. Rowe. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Bazemore, so are we talking parliamentary procedure, which would I would allow Ms. Rowe to continue? Or are we talking legislative uh, session? I, I would like to know that, yeah, how this committee typically would move something like this forward before making the formally making the motion. OK, so typically for um, the legislative session, so for instance, Mabe, they take the position on legislation. They either oppose it, they support it, or they support it with amendments. So if we wanted to um, convey to the legislators, that is that is the way that it would be done to support it, oppose it or support it with amendments. It's such a shame, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would uh, move to oppose it, sadly. Um, so yes, I make a motion to oppose this bill. Is there a second? I'll second that. Um, Mr. Thomas, or I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Dr. Hager, do you want to speak to your motion? Um, yes, I mean, again, I've, I've spoken to this before as well. I, I actually suggested the idea of making it a two year term in order to stagger the the appointments, which I think is, is a very good idea and a, and a good way to ensure that there isn't full turnover of the board. And then this 
ridiculous amendment got put on that I think is um, incredibly offensive and um, I just I, I don't I take honestly personal offense to it and I, I think that I know that there's supposedly precedent for it but um, there are four appointed members whose term ends in November and are being forced to stay on until February if this passes and who um, would that would make it so those four members could not hold a position on the board. It would make it so that they the new members would come in midway through budget season. I mean, the reasons the list of reasons the amendment is is poorly thought out is very, very long. And so um, sadly, because of that, I would oppose it. OK, thank you. And I'll um, hold my comments. Mr. Thomas. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Bazemore. Um, can the governor, could the current government, governor, is he allowed to appoint any members for December of, of, of this year? Um, it's my understanding that a lame duck governor, uh, and this is just my understanding, I haven't researched, researched it, is if he's not on the ballot, the primary ballot, and, is, and cannot run again for whatever reason, and in this, in this instance, it's term limits, then that, that governor is considered a, a lame duck governor and cannot appoint uh, members to the board, any board or commission after the primary election. That That's my understanding. Yeah, and that's my understanding too, listening to the Baltimore County House delegation, talking to our delegates, talking to our senators, is that the governor is legally not allowed to, yes. to, to do this. He's not allowed to appoint anyone in December. So if this bill doesn't pass, then we're just not going to have any, any board members for December and January. And that's why I support that part of the bill. And I support the first part of the bill, staggering the elections. I support everything about this bill. I think it is definitely, it is horrible that we're gonna have a board member coming in in the middle of budget season. It is not well, but I think that's that's like the, what, what we're stuck in right now, considering the fact that this is the first time we have a hybrid elected board. And it is also the first time that this current governor who, who appointed our, our previous members is not on the ballot for another term. So if, like that, that that's that's the one reason I understand all the comments, but if not, then we're not going to have board members. So then then it means then we'll have what seven plus one. The sort of the, there's going to be eight board members for the month of December and January. That's that's appointing the chair and vice chair. As of those board members are going to be starting the budget process. Those board members are going to be discussing legislative priorities. And so that's again why. And I and I that's what I'm trying. I tried to stress last meeting when I'm trying to stress again is that I. That's my understanding of the law is that this governor cannot do that. So that the governor cannot appoint members. And I and I I, I don't think I and I and I hope that that isn't that that shouldn't be a I understand my board members might be offended if that wasn't the case in law. But I think that we we should support this because I don't see another way for this board to have 12 members at a time. Thank you. Um, Ms. Rowe and then uh, Dr. Hager. Yes, so Mr. Baysmore, um, I had looked into this a little bit and my understanding is that uh, if you could find out if this is true or not, is that if the governor that we have currently were to, if the commission were to make recommendations, if the governor we have currently were to appoint the members before the primary, then it would be legal for the current governor to appoint the members and as the primary has been pushed off into July, it seems more likely to me that the commission might actually finish their work since they're taking applications now. Um, it seems to me that that provides a way for us to have board members appointed. And so because I had found out about that, um, I'm less concerned about the illegality of a lamed up governor because I think it's entirely possible that we could get those appointments before the primary. Thank you. And Dr. Hager? Um, I I just would like to know what has happened in, in other terms where the governors were considered lame duck governors. Were there no, and, and this is in the past when we had a fully appointed board. So is this to suggest that there's never been a board member appointed to start their term 
when there's been a lame duck governor in the past. I, I can't imagine that that is the case. And to the point that there will only be eight board members, you're absolutely right, Mr. Thomas, there will likely be only eight board members if this bill were to pass because the four board members who are appointed are not obligated to stay on past November. And I just, I think it's, this is using individual humans as pawns in some game. And I, I, I think it's again, incredibly offensive that this amendment was added to a very strong bill. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to comment that I am opposed to this bill, and um, I I agreed with Dr. Hager when she brought the motion to the board in adding to our legislative priorities. Um, but I believe that the additional language is very problematic, and I won't take the time here because we did have a very um, robust discussion in a full board meeting about this. Um, is there any other uh, additional comments before we take the roll call vote, Mr. Thomas? Thank you. I, in terms of the board, BCBS Board of Education, I think when we moved to the hybrid and appointed board, those appointed members had a term that was cut short. So from my understanding, we haven't had an instance when the appointment date for these board members was at the gubernatorial election year. Um, so I don't think and, to, and again, I haven't looked back in the history of BCPS to see that. Also, I wanted to also state that the intent of this bill was initially for this matter. The, the, the initial bill language was addressing the, the lame duck governor. The amendment was the additional, what, what the board had requested in legislative priorities. Um, I just wanted to state that as well. Um, but I understand the concerns of board members. I will be voting uh, to not support this motion, um, but I'm, I, I, I again appreciate the discussion. Thank you. And Dr. Hager, did you put? Is the motion you to put, oppose the bill? Yes. Yes, she needs to put that in the chat, please. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I put the original um, motion. I can read it. Sorry. I will second that if there's no second. I believe I was the second. Oh, OK. I didn't know. Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> are, are we voting, or do you want me to read the motion? Uh, so Dr. Hager's typing. She moved to oppose the bill, and you, you second it. So now okay. we're going to vote. OK. Yes, just to restate the motion is to oppose this bill. Correct. Okay, Ms. Causey. Yes. Mr. Thomas. No. Ms. Rowe. Yes. Dr. Hager. Yes. Okay, so that motion carries. Thank you. Um, Mr. Baysmore. Yes, ma'am. And like the previous bills, Madam Chair, when the hearing come up on the Senate side, we'll get that out to the full uh, legislative committee and, uh, and then you can get it to the full board if any individuals wanted to weigh in on that particular bill. OK, thank uh, you. Uh, we had down here also uh, from a previous discussion, HB 797, which was a statewide bill um, for the student board members voting that bill. Um, did not cross over. It was sponsored by Delegate Lukey, um, but it didn't cross over to the Senate side. OK, thank you. And. And our last. Mabe, Mabe was opposed to that as well, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Okay. Mr. Thomas, you have a question? Yes. Um. Oh, thank you. Never mind. Sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. That's okay. There's there's a lot of bills, a lot of numbers. Okay. Um, Hundreds of bills. <laughs> yeah, Mabe did oppose that. I got my sheet here. So. Okay. okay. And our last bill is HB 1255 um, and Senate Bill 705, which crossed over as well. This bill uh, Mabe supported with amendments. 
it's uh, the physical restraint and seclusion uh, a bill limiting um, the ability to restrain, physically restrain and seclude, uh, put uh, students in seclusion who are having uh, behavioral issues. And um, are you aware if they included Mabe's amendments? I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure on this one if, if Mabe's uh, amendments were uh, included. What were the amendments? So Mabe, I have um, Mabe's testimony again available publicly on their website, mabe.org. And the amendments Let's see, they have two pages of comments. OK, so Maryland Association of Boards of Education supports House Bill 1255 with amendments to address concerns with the scope and timing of certain provisions, including the elimination of seclusion as an allowable behavioral intervention in public schools. Mabe's primary concerns proposed to be addressed in amendments is that if enacted, this bill would prohibit services currently included in student individualized education programs and behavioral intervention plans. Under current law and regulations, once seclusion has been used or school personnel have made a student specific determination that it may need to be used consistent with um, Article B1 of this regulation, seclusion may be included in a student's behavioral intervention plan or IEP to address the student's behavior in an emergency situation. That's uh, Comar 13A.0.04.05.2022. Um, under House Bill 1255, these regulations governing the use of seclusion could continue to be applied based on a student's IEP or BIP, but only in non-public schools. Therefore, MAVE is requesting amendments to allow for a reasonable amount of time to continue to administer existing IEPs and VIPs as any new regulations are promulgated and guidance is provided on the transition away from practices that are now allowed in both public and private schools. Um, because the uh, bill, as it is currently um, stated, <clears throat> I have to go back to the right tab. That if this if the law passed as it stood um, without those amendments, then it would become effective July 1, 2022, which realistically, um, for those of us that understand how um, you know involved the IEP planning process is for both staff, uh, the student and the parents, um, that would be really challenging to try and modify to go back and evaluate and and modify and put in in plans in place. Um, what I am not clear with the language is if those were implemented, or if those were included. Madam Chair, we'll have to yes. mon monitor this one as it move forward, and I'll contact Mabe to see if and let to tell them to let us know if their amendments were were adopted. Uh, OK, and what? I'm looking at it, it passed the original chamber. And it says first reading in the opposite chamber and it says it passed both chambers. Things move quick, okay. That was. Was this bill through already then? Let me look it up. I, th I, I have to follow it on the Senate side. I don't believe it is. OK, I, I don't believe it is. I'll have to follow this on the Senate side. Board members, are there questions or comments regarding this? 
legislation. Okay, hearing hearing none, are there um, other bills that crossed over that this committee should hear about or consider, Mr. Baysmore, or if there's other board members? I think that was it, Madam Chair, and I'll follow up on um, HB 1255 with Mabe. I do have one question. Yes, Ms. Rowe. Um, Mr. Baysmore, are you familiar with a bill about um, air quality testing in schools and requiring that that air quality testing, if it's done, be done by a, a professional air quality tester? Yes. Did that it, pass? It, no, it didn't. There was a local bill. It did not um, pass out of the um, House delegation. Um, we already have in Baltimore County um, certified industrial hygienists that go out and, and do this work. Uh, they work for Bal you know, Baltimore County a school system, and you do not have to go out and get private companies to come in and do that. So um, the delegation voted, voted it down and, and, uh, in their House delegation meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and I see Dr. Hager is typing in the chat. Um, yes, I just I've, I've been following the recess um, wellness bill, and I didn't. And it similarly says uh, passed both sides or something like that on the uh, on the tracker online. I just wanted to confirm that that is accurate. While we had your time, Mr. Baysmore. What number is that? Um, um, HB 0573. Let me look that up. H HB 0573. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There's been a recess bill for many years now, and it's never fully made its way through. So we're hoping this is the one. I can't, I can't have, I don't see the full. Let me, let me look down here. Madam Chair, do you, when you pull your General Assembly up, does it give you the status of the bill? Because mine isn't giving me that right now. And I can follow up on this, uh, Ms. Hager, if I can't pull it up right now. That's fine. I just figured again, while we had, while we had you, I figured I'd ask. All right. So it's interesting, Dr. Hager, because the uh, legislative website, it has the different um, dots on a timeline that refer to the uh, steps. Right. And uh, the it's showing for House Bill 0573, original chamber, check the box, first reading, referral to committee, check the box. Um, and then the other circles are not highlighted, but it does say it passed both chambers. Yeah, that was without, confusing. Without the individual steps being highlighted. So I'll look in. I'll look into that because I can't see that whole whole screen on my uh, phone right now. So I'll follow up. I'll follow up on that one. HB O five seven three and find out where it is, and email yes. the committee. Okay. Yes, please. Thank um, you so much. You. And, you're welcome. Thank you for um, bringing that one up, Dr. Hager. That is. Uh, I've been interested in additional recess and. Um, other other um, activities and uh, programs that we can have to increase the um, overall health of our students so that they can achieve more academically. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? Questions or comments? Um, so I did just want to discuss with the committee um, as we move forward with the session and then we're going to do um, have a meeting and then have a wrap up and then present that to the full board in a regular time for committee update. Um, the next piece of work that I did want to work on is um, developing specific uh, operating procedures for this committee um, as we move forward um, with the 
goal in mind of continuous improvement um, and also in just clarifying how uh, things um, have worked and how we've looked at things. Um, also, Public Works has a number of recommendations around board governance, um, and so evaluating those to see if uh, any of those would impact our work here and if there's um, any processes that we can improve upon and then, you know, um, get that into some sort of a little manual or something that's online and so that it's available to the full board, the public. Um, I believe it's something where our committee would work on it, make recommendations and then bring it to the full board. Um, and I'm thinking here, especially along the lines of the work that Ms. Rowe did for the audit committee, uh, where the full board did evaluate um, the audit committee charter and the um, work plan of the Office of Internal Audit. Um, so that's something that I'll bring forward as an official agenda item in another meeting. And I just wanted to point out if there's any agenda items that any committee members would like included to just email uh, me and Mr. Thomas and um, include Mr. Basemore and we will um, address those. Um, and Mr. Thomas, I see you raising your hand. Yes, uh, just on the topic of, 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 form, of agenda items, I think um, we're looking at next school year and how we, we structure our meetings. We should also consider inviting stakeholder groups to discuss their feedback on, on our legislative priorities. Groups like the Baltimore County Student Councils, which have a two legislative affairs coordinators as students and they could come and present to us or we could invite tabco to speak on behalf of certain bills espbc uh, asked me and we should really discuss with our stakeholders these bills and really get feedback from them as to whether or not our system should support these bills so that's just something i think we should consider and it could be a 15 minute presentation or, or a q a at the beginning of, of of our meetings um so that's something to consider for next year I, I think um, we definitely want to bring forward ideas that is, um, you know, I like the idea of that and that's something that we can discuss as a full board. And that is something that we hear from our community. They want to be more engaged and we have policies around community engagement. So um, I'm looking forward to putting that on an agenda and, and everybody bringing their ideas. Um, all right, the last item on the agenda is announcements. Uh, the next Legislative and Government Relations Committee meeting will be held on Thursday, April 7th, 2022 at 4 p.m. Um, and also anyone in the public that's listening that would uh, like to provide comments to the board, um, the email is boe at bcps.org. Um, and I'm the chair of this committee currently, and my email is kcausey at bcps.org. So any of our public or key stakeholders that want to provide input, We'd love to hear from you. Um, is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. you. And while our Good members evening. are still here, I just wanted to state, I've been very distracted this meeting by the amazing artwork in the Carver High School uh, lobby. So uh, I, I encourage you all to go to Carver High School and check it out. Oh, yes, we've been there. It's, uh, it's really stunning. Awesome. All right, have a good night. Thanks, Christian. Thank you. Take care.